You know, they say there are two things that are mandatory in this life, death and taxes. I'm here to challenge that assumption today. Hi, I'm Paul Moore, managing partner of Wellings Capital and the author of Bigger Pockets book, Storing Up Profits, Capitalize on America's Obsession with Stuff by Investing in Self Storage. That's available right now at biggerpockets.com slash storage. I think that if you look back through history, you'll figure out why the Forbes 400, the wealthiest people in America, almost all invest in commercial real estate. Today, we're going to talk about how self-storage and other commercial real estate helps people save on taxes, kick the can down the road, and sometimes never pay federal or state income taxes. I'm going to go through about 10 different ways commercial real estate investors and operators save on taxes. So let's jump right in. Number one, hire a tax strategist. And that may not sound like a tax saving strategy, but it is. My friend Ed had been paying about $100,000 to $120,000 a year in taxes in California on his commercial real estate investments. And he stumbled across an article about ways to save on taxes for commercial real estate investors. And he was puzzled, so he took his CPA to lunch. Well, that was the last lunch they'd ever have. You'll see why in a second. He said, hey, what about this strategy? And the CPA said, yeah, that would be really good for you. You should do that. And he said, you knew about this and you didn't tell me? And he's like, yeah, yeah, you should try that. He said, what about this strategy? He said, yeah, yeah, that would be good for you too. You could save a lot with that. And he said, wait, 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 wait. You're a CPA, you do taxes for a living. You didn't tell me about this? He said, you pay me to do your taxes, not be a tax strategist. That was their last lunch. Ed went out and hired a CPA that had the desire and passion to help his investors save on taxes. And he's paid about zero in federal taxes ever since in the last decade. Now, just to be clear, Ed's not dodging anything. He's actually following the tax code because the US government, as Amanda Hahn and others have told us, is setting up, they always set up strategies and tax structures to motivate people to do exactly what they want them to do. And they want people to invest in commercial real estate. So there's lots of tax benefits involved and a tax strategist who's you know, often a CPA too, can help you unlock that. Number two, make sure you directly invest. Now, if you're investing in a corporation and you're getting, say, a 1099, and they're getting all the tax benefits, you might not get all those. But directly investing in real estate means you're investing in a property directly or through a syndication. And you'll know you're directly investing if you get a K-1. That would be a partnership return from a syndicator. So as a self-storage investor, you should expect to get the K-1, which will actually pass through the depreciation losses, which we'll talk about in a minute. Strategy number three, accelerate depreciation through a cost segregation study. Now, we don't have time to get into all the ins and outs about depreciation, but depreciation allows investors, property owners, to write off the cost of the property, not including the land, and all of the stuff you get with the property over a number of years. Straight line depreciation with residential, 27 and a half years. With commercial property, it's 39 years. But a cost segregation study will allow you to dramatically accelerate a large portion of that into, say, a 15 year straight line rather than 27 or 39. Some of it in 10, some of it in seven, some in five-year buckets. This significantly increases the paper losses that commercial real estate investors can get from their property. But it's better than that because on December 22nd, 2017, Congress passed a law that significantly bonused commercial real estate uh, operators and investors allowing them to accelerate a lot of those depreciation items into the first year. Instead of spreading out, let's say, a $10 million loss over 39 years, it can be 
put into a, a significant amount of that with a self-storage facility can be accelerated into, let's say, 15-year buckets, which can all be taken in year one. This provides significant benefits. And I think it's one of the reasons commercial real estate took off again right after uh, that tax reform bill was passed. The cost segregation study, I, I just can't tell you the power of this. Check it out for yourself. The fourth tax saving strategy is quite simple. It's return of capital. Now, if you're investing with a syndicator or even if you're doing your own deals, you don't have to necessarily pay a return on investment. You can actually pay investors a return of investment. And so the return of capital is basically just getting the money you put in back first before you get profit. And that's kicking the can down the road on the profit and of course, with the depreciation I just spoke about, you could kick the can down the road for many, many years before you have to pay taxes. And so return of capital is a somewhat obvious but powerful strategy. I mean, think about this. If you refinance your home, you're not going to pay taxes on that, right? Well, the proceeds from return of capital are treated similarly. A fifth strategy is using Section 179. Section 179 allows an operator to actually write off maintenance and repairs and a lot of items in the current year. The problem is some bookkeepers don't know all these rules and they might capitalize these items. Say a roof might be capitalized and that would be depreciated and taken off taxes, if you will, over say 15 years. But if it's a roof repair or replacement, it might be able to count in that year. And this plays a significant role in giving investors tax savings in the current year. Another strategy is just refinancing. We talked about return of capital. This is kind of similar. If you refinance your home, you don't have to pay taxes on those proceeds. It's the same with refinancing a property. Refinancing a self-storage property allows the operator to pull out or extract lazy equity. Lazy equity is equity in the deal that's just not earning that much. And it by, by extracting it, handing it back to investors, it lowers the investor's risk, takes risk off the table. It gives them money to reinvest somewhere else. And there's no tax on that, which is awesome. Now, a really powerful strategy is the 1031 exchange. And many of you know about this. You know, that same law I mentioned a moment ago that was passed in uh, 2017 actually threatened to take away the 1031 exchange. And it did, but not for real estate investors. It did for folks with planes and boats and cars and other types of property. But it didn't affect the real estate market. And the 1031 exchange was originally set up for real estate investors anyway. The 1031 exchange allows investors to actually exchange one property for another, but it doesn't have to be a direct exchange. It doesn't have to be a mobile home park in Cleveland traded in for a mobile home park in Cincinnati. It can be all kinds of different properties. So if you sell a self-storage property, you can actually go through a 1031 intermediary and allow that exchange, allow that the cash from the sale to be put in holding and then you have about six months to close. There's some other rules. It's really important that you follow all the rules to the T to make sure you can kick the can down the road. What you're doing is you're taking the capital gains and you're taking the depreciation recapture and you're not paying those taxes. You're rolling them forward into the next property. One of my investors from Lexington, Kentucky has actually been rolling forward his investments through 1031 exchanges for decades. I think it was since the 70s. He hasn't paid taxes, but he's going to have to pay the piper someday, right? Not necessarily. He doesn't plan to ever pay those taxes. Why? Because there's this thing that we affectionately call swap till you drop. You continually do 1031 exchanges. You continually roll forward the capital gains and the depreciation recapture. You don't pay those taxes. And if you sell that property a month before you pass away, you have to pay all those taxes that have accrued over decades in his case. But if you hold the properties and you pass those along to your heirs, then your heirs cannot reset the basis, which means 
the property is appraised at the time of your death, and that property basis is reset. And if they sell that property, say, the next month, at that amount, there's no capital gains. There's no depreciation recapture. It's a very powerful way to save taxes and create multi-generational wealth. I highly recommend that you check out the 1031 exchange and you check out the opportunity to swap to you drop. Now, there are limits on that and you can check that out with your tax strategist. There are other ways to save on taxes for real estate investors. One would be a deferred sales trust. Another would be uh, another DST, a Delaware statutory trust. There's also other strategies, and this is why it's so important to get a tax strategist involved to help you figure out how to capture all of these amazing opportunities. Another one I just heard about was putting your property in a special kind of trust. And again, it's beyond the scope of this video, but we wanted to tell you that these opportunities are out there for self-storage investors. Another great strategy is buying or investing in your properties through a self-directed IRA or self-directed 401k. I talked to lots of people who don't even know you can do this. They've been investing in their company 401k and they have no idea that they can actually buy property or invest in property through this self-directed option. So there's a self-directed SEP IRA, self-directed Roth IRA, there's self-directed Roth and regular 401k plans. You can invest through these and you can actually defer taxes in the Roth case forever. There's no tax to be paid later. And with the SEP IRA or regular 401k, you can defer those taxes till you actually retire and start taking those profits out. So this is a great way to invest in all kinds of properties, including real estate, including self-storage. Now, there are some people who probably shouldn't get a self-directed IRA. If you're the kind of person who wants to invest in your neighbor's crazy invention in their basement, you might make a lot of money, but you might be taking a really lot of risk. And so just be really careful of that before you jump in. Think about you know, taking care of this money just like it was money in your regular bank account. The last issue I want to discuss is one of the most powerful issues of all. It's not well understood by the general population, and that's probably good. I've got a friend who said if the American public knew about how little commercial real estate investors pay in taxes, we'd probably have another tax revolt on our hands. I want to talk to you about the qualified real estate professional status. If you work over 750 hours a year in real estate, and if you do that more than any other thing that you do time-wise, there are some other issues involved, but you can potentially become a qualified real estate professional. Now, if you've got a full-time career and busy job, you might want to consider getting your spouse to qualify and file jointly, and it uh, provides amazing tax benefits. If you are a qualified real estate professional, you can actually use the depreciation losses. And I talked about bonus depreciation earlier, providing potentially millions of dollars in losses. You can use that against your regular income. So you might have a lady who has a job as a doctor and she makes $400,000 a year while her husband is a real estate investor, maybe a realtor and a real estate investor. He gets the qualified real estate professional status and he's able to take these massive losses on his investments and apply them to her income. That's really powerful. And if you're just on your own, I mean, you can apply it to your own income because there's passive losses and they have limitations. There are active losses. Those are different. Well, the qualified real estate professional status allows you to mingle both and use losses against gains that you couldn't otherwise offset. This is one of the great benefits of full-time real estate investing. My stepdad heard some of this information and he was upset. He's not a real estate investor and he said, that's not fair. And I just wanna remind everybody that these laws were set up by Congress. They were set up for decades 
by folks who are trying to motivate us to go out and invest in commercial real estate or residential real estate and motivate us to create more jobs, create all kinds of good things for the American economy. So go out and do that. Check out my book, Storing Up Profits, Capitalize on America's Obsession with Stuff by Investing in Self-Storage, and go out and figure out how you can make money and minimize your tax burden. <laughs>